Hello, all my college football friends out there. Welcome to another segment of the Buckeye Vinny YouTube channel sports show. My friends, before I start, I want to give a special shout out to a good friend of mine and subscriber. He goes by the name of Jim James who gave me this suggestion video to do today. Let's get started. Today's video is going to be about college football and the college football playoff pairings. Now, my friends, what I mean by that is college football playoffs first started in 2014. Why can I remember that so well and vividly was because it was the year that my Buckeyes beat the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide 42 to 35 to get to the national championship college football title by beating Oregon 42 to 20. That was the first year, first time that college football had a playoff system, 2014. But my friends, when you stop and look, Okay, of the past, and I'm talking in the 70s, 80s, 90s, the past, how they never had college football playoffs. How many teams that might have won it, if they did, never got the opportunity? It was always one versus two, and that was it. My friends, 1970, Texas Longhorns, and my Ohio State Buckeyes shared a title. Who shares a title in, 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 in sports nowadays? You, you have a winner in a championship and you have a loser. Who shares a title? This is how they did it back then. 1974, USC Trojans, Oklahoma Sooners shared a title. 1978, mighty Alabama Crimson Tide and USC Trojans, again, shared a title. My friends, no shot at this, but sharing a title is like kissing your sister, okay? When I went on to research this even more, I looked at 1990, okay? It was a great year for me. 1990, we had Colorado Buffaloes, 11 wins, one loss, one tie. Georgia Tech, 11 wins, zero losses, and one tie. Colorado Buffaloes, coached by then very tough coach Bill McCartney, beat Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl 10-9. I remember this game like it was yesterday. Their only loss of the season was to the Big Ten foe, Illinois, fighting Illini. They lost that game 23-22, and they tied the SEC Tennessee Volunteers 31 to 31 in that 1990 season. Georgia Tech, coached by Bobby Ross. Georgia Tech, again, zero losses. Their only tie was to North Carolina 13 to 13. This is a Georgia Tech team that pounded a very good Nebraska Cornhusker team coached by none other than Tom Osborne in the Citrus Bowl, 45-21. to You would have thought that Georgia Tech would have been the college football national champs. Not so. They shared the title with the Colorado Buffaloes. This is what I'm getting at, bro, folks out there. I just don't understand how College Football Association did their college football pairings back then. 1991, Washington Huskies, coached by Don James, perfect 12-0. Miami Hurricanes, coached by Dennis Erickson, perfect 12-0. What a matchup this would have been. This would have been the game of the century. They never had an opportunity to play one another. Huskies put a beat down on Michigan that year. I loved it. Uh, in the Rose Bowl, 34-14. And the Miami Hurricanes put a beat down on Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, 22 to nothing. And these two powerhouse teams never faced one another. Why? Because there was no playoff pairings back then. 
Moving on. 1997. What a year this was. Okay, you had Michigan, coached by Lloyd Carr, a perfect 12-0. They beat Washington State in the Rose Bowl 21-16. You had Nebraska, a perfect 13-0 in that 1997 season. They rolled big time Tennessee 42-17 in the Orange Bowl. What happened? Those two undefeated teams never met one another. So what happened? The AP poll, the coaches poll, decided to have a split college championship title. Nebraska won it and Michigan won it. My friends, I, I must be old-fashioned, but you don't have a split in, in sports. You have a winner, you have a loser. Case closed, okay? You have a champion is what I'm talking about. Not two champions. 2004, this gets very interesting. USC, Trojans, coached by Pete Carroll then. We all know they pounded Oklahoma Sooners 55-19 to in that year. But we all remember that the championship was vacated due to Reggie Bush ineligibility that year of 2004, okay? The AP and the BCS both took it away from the USC Trojans, again, because of Reggie Bush ineligibility. So, this gets very interesting. Being that it was vacated, it stayed vacated. This is what I don't understand. If we had a college football playoff like we do today, that would have never happened. But back then, they did not. So what happened was, you would have thought that being that it was stripped from USC because of the ineligibility due to Reggie Bush, what happened was they did not give the championship to the Oklahoma Sooners that season Bob Stoops, they finished 12-1. and one. Their only loss was to USC, which technically vacated their championship title win. But why wasn't the Auburn Tigers, 13-0, coached by Tommy Tuberville, 8-0 in the SEC in that 2004 season, why were they not awarded? the national championship crown. Why were they not even suggested to play in that game? Why? Because they didn't have the right college football playoff pairing format. That's why. So we had USC that year, I believe undefeated. We had Oklahoma Sooners going into that game undefeated, and we had the Auburn Tigers undefeated and finished undefeated but had nothing to show for. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Auburn Tigers, again, in 2004, 13-0, 8-0 in the SEC, and went on to defeat the 8th-ranked Virginia Tech Hokies 16-13 to in the Sugar Bowl and still was overlooked. My friends, you know, look, looking back, you know, thank you, Jim James. He brought up some great points when he comments to my video, and, and, and he's right. You know, this was a disgrace to college football. When you stop and look back at this, how they didn't even give the Auburn Tigers an opportunity to even showcase themselves, to even... Given the right chance, being undefeated, to play for a national championship. Totally wrong. It, it really is. Why did they decide Oklahoma and not Auburn? Now, I know at that time, USC was given the shot because why? I'm just going to say it. They were USC. Okay? Head coach Pete Carroll. That's fine and dandy, but when you leave out an undefeated Auburn Tigers team that year, 
13 and 0, 8 and 0 in the SEC. The teams they beat that year and you leave them out of the national championship title game, something's wrong there. Really, something is wrong there. I'm just glad that College Football Association finally got it right, okay, that when you go to a playoff pairing format, you're not jipping your, the teams that are undefeated. You're giving them an opportunity to get to the big dance, okay? And my friends, again, looking back in 1990, Colorado and Georgia Tech sharing a title, 1997, Nebraska and Michigan sharing a title. 1991, the Huskies and um, Miami Hurricanes sharing a title. No, those teams should have been getting it on. Not sharing a title. Get it on the field. You know, and like I said, back in the 60s and the 70s, numerous teams shared titles. Like I said, the Longhorns and the Buckeyes, 1970. USC, Oklahoma Sooners, 1974. Bama and USC, 1978. Well, thank goodness that College Football Association has come a long way with going with the college football playoff format today. My friends, if you are new to my channel, please, by all means, click on the subscribe button. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And like always, please comment down below. I would love to read your comments. Like always, my friends, peace out. God bless. A special shout out to my lovely wife who bought me this wrist bracelet. Why? For no reason other than she's a great woman and I love her to death. Like always, peace out. God bless. Like everything else, my friends, stay safe. Buckeye Vinny's out of here.